Hello everybody, this is John Buck back with another Continuous Time Linear Systems video. In this video I'm going to show you how to analyze a second order system by putting it into standard form, figure out whether it's overdamped or underdamped, what the damping parameter is, what the natural frequency is, and then sketch a Bode plot approximation to the frequency response magnitude for this system. Uh, all of this assumes that you've already watched the video on the theory for second order systems and Bode plots. So if you haven't seen that video already, I strongly recommend stop this one, go back and catch up by watching that one, and then come back here and you'll see an example of me applying all the ideas I talk about in that video. Okay, so for today's example, I'm going to look at a particular second order system. We say imagine h of j omega is 1600 divided by j omega squared plus 16 plus j omega, or 16 j omega plus 400. And the first thing I always want to do to minimize the risk of getting anything wrong is to move this into standard form, which means I need to solve for what omega n squared, or omega n and, and the zeta, the damping parameter are. So I'm going to write up the standard form denominator right next to this to help us see how to match up terms. So when I put it this way, the first thing, the place I usually start to figure out where all the terms go in the standard form is to match up the constant with the natural undamped frequency squared. Right, so we know for this example that omega n squared is 400. So if I take the square root of both sides, I get that omega n equals 20. So the natural undamped factor for this system is, is, or is 20 radians per second. And now I can go and solve in the center term, the, the j omega term, to get the, the zeta coefficient, because now that I know omega n, I can set these equal. And when I do that, so I'm going to match this constant to the 2 zeta omega n over here, and say, well, those two must be equal, so let me solve that for zeta, since I know omega n now. And so I have that 2 zeta n omega n is 16, and now I'm going to plug in my omega n from the, that I just solved for. When I do that, I get that, that my zeta is 16 40th, right, when I solve for zeta, or 2 fifths. So my damping factor for this one is 2 fifths, which, you know, comparing to our cutoffs from the last one, is less than 1 over root 2. So this is an underdamped system where we expect to have a resonant peak on it. And then the last thing I need to deal with up here is the numerator, where I've got to say, well, to get things in standard form, I want to say there might be some gain A here that's, that's part of this. So let me solve for those two. Right, and now I'll plug in. I said, well, I saw already omega n is 20, so omega n squared is, is 400. So I've got a times 400 is 1600. So this system has a, a gain of 4 in front of it. Right, so I can think of this as 4 times a standard form, one like I analyzed last time. So this will just add a little additional gain in dB. The other important thing is time to note here, as, as I should have should have called this out a little more is is that because zeta is less than one right at two fifths is point four this tells me the system is underdamped so the impulse response will oscillate back and forth and the uh, <clears throat> right and and the uh, frequency response will have a, a peak in it around omega n okay so these are uh, my, my important pieces, so let me, let me uh, point out what the gain means here. I can think of the, the gain as saying I've just got four times the standard form one I did in the previous video. Right, so I can write it this way where I've got a gain of four times the, this is the same one I did in the previous video, which is the low pass filter version for the second uh, order filter. Right, As omega gets small, I just get a constant with a gain of one. And so when I take, let me scoot up a little bit, and then I'll take 20 times the log of this. So I put it in this form. Oh, wait, I just noticed something I missed earlier. Because that should be squared. Uh, so now I can say, well, 20 log of 4 here, if I put that into my calculator, will be 12 dB. So I've got something that's 12 dB above the version I drew last time. So let's see how that looks. I'll start on a clean page. So that, that factor of 4 just moves everything up by 12 dB. So I still have my low frequency asymptote that's a straight line. But now it's starting at 12 dB. And then I have a, a uh, high frequency thing that rolls off at 40 dB per decade. 
And the crossover between these two happens at omega n, which we already saw is 20. On my, this, I should have labeled this as my log omega axis. And on the left side here, I have my, my uh, 20 log magnitude 8. So then this is my sort of skeleton that I'm going to draw on. I just want to add one more detail, which is I do have a resonance here, right? We found that zeta is, it was 2 fifths. So that I know the the peak above that will be uh, <clears throat> the b before uh, not counting the 12 dB. The peak would be at one over two zeta times one minus zeta squared. So I got to get my calculator out and plug in for that. So when I plug in zeta equals two fifths and solve all this, I get one over 0 0.733 or about 1.36 which is, says it's about 2.7 dB above the intersection, right? That was, this is for the standard form, assuming I have 0 dB, and then the gain added 4 dB. So this says I'd start from about a decade below and go to about a decade above. Oh, wrong place. Hang on just a sec. And so this one is, is not an especially strong peak, but it would be not, you know, 2.5, about 2.7 dB above the, uh, the line here. Um, And so, you know, that's a, a sort of broad peak that would look like this. So I'd start with the straight line, have a, well, that's not a very good straight line. But I'd start with this straight line shown in green, go up onto the white curve starting at about 2, have a gentle peak. That's, again, this is a rough sketch to give you an idea, but it says, well, it'll go from 12 up to about 14.5 dB before it comes back down to join the minus 40 dB per decade line by about 200. And the peak, again, will be around... Uh, 20 here. It would actually be a bit less in this case, but when we're showing on the log scale here, it's not that precise to fill it in. Okay, so that gives you an example of, of how we can go through starting from the equation, get it into standard form, match parameters to solve for the natural frequency first, and then for zeta, the damping ratio. Based on the damping ratio, work out if it's underdamped or overdamped. In this case, it was underdamped, and in fact, it was significantly underdamped in the sense that it, that zeta was less than one over root two. So I did have a I'm going to have a resonant peak in my frequency response. I could al I also had to take care of the extra gain in the numerator to get it into standard form. But once I did that, I found that the whole curve just moves up 12 dB because of that factor of four. Okay, so that's all for this time. There's a good overview of magnitudes for second order systems, and I will uh, see you next time.